Ben, thank you so much for making the time to, to join us for this session. As I say, we're talking about the biggest, uh, second biggest swear word of this year, and that is assessment. Um, today we'll be talking, uh, the session has been informed by the survey we shared or, or asked the colleagues to complete for us early in the year after the first um, assessment period. Um, so today we're just really going to be talking talking to that. Um, Nicola, I'm sorry, I didn't say, uh, share the um, the link to the slides. I don't know if you'd be able to do that. Otherwise, I can do it as well. Um, Hi, sorry. Yeah, I think I can put it on yeah. the Are You Teaching Online site afterwards, if folks are cool with yeah. that. Okay, then, no worries. Then I can do that, Summer. Don't worry. I'll simply do that. Awesome. Cool. Nice. All right. Fantastic. All right. So as I was saying, you know, today we're talking about, you know, some, some feedback around around what I think is, is probably the biggest gripes um, around online assessment. Um, I'll be talking through obviously the two tools a bit. I'm not going to show go through all of the basics, but just just around the two most two or three most critical parts that I think we learned from from the last um, assessment period as well. Um, so we're going to share that today and we'll also send out a, a, a little PDF guide to to just uh, drive drive it home hopefully. And yeah, um, before we continue, is there any questions from anybody um, around anything? If there is, you can just either type it in the chat or Meet M and you can take the mic if you want. Okay, I'm going to push on and if I get a question, then we can just stop. I mean, we we everything and adaptable. Okay, so before I continue, the first big disclaimer I always put on when we talk about assessment, especially online assessment. Please just remember, don't delete any link to assessment. Um, everything that students submit in the mark is, 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 is saved on, on, on that assessment link. You can hide it from students, but please don't delete it. That is the only, um, the only uh, copy that, that, that we do have. If you delete the, the, the links, it is all gone. All right, um, and yeah, uh, as as the slide says as well, you know, new course, uh, new year, new course site, but we'll work on on something to help everybody roll out new course sites and 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 some cooler ways to to organize these a bit later. Okay, um, so. Just another big disclaimer without something that we learned from 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 the previous assessment we had we had uh, colleagues who had uh, assessments that closed midnight on on the last the last deadline I think was twenty fourth of July um, and uh, yeah we had like a ton of emails come in at midnight on Friday I can't submit I have problems. And uh, then it's sometimes something that we, we, we can't really deal with at that time or, or something like that. So, so if you, if you, um, you know, have any, any, well, not if you have any, if, if you can, please try and, and, and set your deadlines, um, you know, within, you know, a reasonable hour in which you would be able to receive emails and the same with us as well. Um, midnight is just that tad too far. Um, and Caroline, we would gladly share this slide with you. Um, so yeah, so yeah, just keep that in mind. Um, I know students want the midnight. I don't know what that extra four hours is going to do for them, but I'm not sure. So as far as I, as you can, if we can keep it in those hours, that would be great. Okay, <clears throat> sorry, talking the whole day. Let's maybe talk about the, you know, the first, the biggie, you know, academic integrity, you know, dishonesty, cheating um, in, in, in the space of online assessment. 
And unfortunately, we don't have the silver bullet to, to offer you. Um, unfortunately, you know, the sad reality of anything online is, you know, we, we the squishy humans can, can, can really get away with anything. Computers are really smart in systems, but uh, until the moment where Skynet rises, that we'll still be able to cheat, cheat machines. Um, and uh, I've spent, uh, well, between myself, Nikolai, and, and other colleagues, we've spent hours scouring the internet and sitting and listening to dodgy software companies trying to sell us the latest uh, in, in spyware um, that, that can be cheated by a simple cardboard um, piece of cardboard, cardboard and a low quality photo. Um, so yeah, the, 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 I think the, 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 the be all and end all what I'm trying to say is, you know, plan for an open book test. Um, it's, it's probably the, the closest we can get to a silver bullet. Um, and, and that unfortunately means, you know, adjusting our assessment practices. Um, you know, we know students, students take, uh, take the easy road. Um, they will always, you know, take take the easy road, and, and and it's amazing how innovative they can be to to find this easy road. So it's always something that we have to plan plan for. Unfortunately, in any online assessment, um, you know, the same we're same with uh, face to face. Um, we we don't always catch everybody that 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 has nefarious um, plans. Um, and another thing that we also need to, to, to keep in, in mind is that students will wait for that absolute deadline. They are amazing project managers when it comes to just in time, um, you know, delivery. Um, so, and, and, and we saw that in the last um, um, assessment period that, that 24th of July, I think it was the 24th, Nicola, I think that was the busiest day on Are You Connected for this year. Um, I think nearly every single user that, that is active um, on Are You Connected was, was on, logged on for that day. Um, so it was a massive spike. So yeah, so just, just bear that in mind, you know, around, around assessment. And, and of course, with academic integrity, that's when students, uh, take, I don't want to say take a liberty, but, you know, they fail to plan and the, the idea of asking somebody, how did you answer this question, um, becomes a very big temptation for those students. Um, but we can put stuff in place with, with what we do have. Um, and I'll talk about that in, in a minute. Um, then the second, and, and, and probably for me, just, just as an important one, is that we've got, we, we, we need to adjust our assessment more to an authentic assessment. Um, and in the, in, the notes under, oh, in the notes underneath here, I've really put through three links. One is a video. Another two is like really easy reading stuff. It, I think the first one would take you about 11 minutes, the other one about seven minutes to read. Um, just around what is authentic assessment and, you know, that it's not some mystical unicorn, but really something that, that we can try and adjust our, our assessment practice to for, for this, this time. Um, I actually advocate for it in most, most times, but it is really just something to, to have a look at. Um, and if you have any issues or, or ideas, you know, maybe speak to a colleague or, or, or with us, we'd be more than happy to assist. Um, then, you know, when I was, let's, if, if we move to, to, to just the way that we assess, it's also something we might just want to keep, keep in the back of our minds. If, if I'm going to be using multiple choice questions, it would be better to use a, a, a randomized uh, question, question from a question bank. Um, and for those colleagues who hasn't used a question bank, there is a video on Are You Teaching Online for it, um, where you can say, I want to create a test of um, 
50 questions, but I populate it with a batch of 100 questions. So at least that way, students, even if they work together, might get different questions. Um, unfortunately, this also means extra time that you have to put in before assessment, um, mm -hmm. and it, it, it can become tedious. So my video. Hi. Hi. Need, need something? Want to ask something? Sorry, I missed who that was. Okay. When, when you're ready, we, we'll be able to help you. Okay. So as I was saying, you know, using a, a randomized uh, quiz, uh, quiz from, um, from the question bank would, would really help. Amon, uh, you raised your hand. Would you like to ask something? Yes, I would like to ask something. Sure, please go for it. Mike's yours. All right. Um, my, other, uh, my question is, when I am making multiple choice questions, mm -hmm. on the solutions, I, would, I wouldn't want them to be, what is it, randomized. But I would, okay. want the questions, I, want, I would want the questions to be randomized, but the solutions not to be randomized as well. Why? I, I think I had... I, it was one that required two options that were above, and I'm sure yeah. when they were writing, they were all shuffled around. Okay. All right. That's something simple we can show you. Um, yeah, that's something simple I can show you. Um, I'll shift to a, a quiz in, in, in a second. Um, then I can show you. It's really just one tick when you set up a question that uh, uh well when you set up a quiz that you just need to untick and then that will work so luckily a very easy solution um yeah so as i was saying the the, the randomized quiz is probably the strongest tool um i've used that in in in, in different spaces where I've, I've done online assessments and it can can really be one of the most powerful um tools you can use and then, of course, you know the the old quiver, uh, the old arrow in the in, in the in the quiver is turn it in. Um, and as as we also um, will get to in a, in a minute, I'll I'll tell, show you more how we can incorporate turn it in um, <clears throat> within the assignment function. Unfortunately, there's no plugin for it for the quiz. Um, but yeah, we'll talk about that in in a moment. Um, so unfortunately, as I say, you know, for the biggie academic integrity, there is no one, one size fits all. There is no piece of software that's foolproof, um, but it's just the way we plan and the tools that we use, that, that, that is our best strategy at the moment. All right, then we, we also had another, another lot, you know, huge amount of questions and issues raised in the survey, but as well as from our engagement with students is, 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 is centered around student readiness. And here I'm not speaking our students or, or here I'm not referring to if students are ready to, to, to write an exam um, in terms of being you know, masters of content, but more are we giving them everything that we can um, and, and unfortunately, this is one of those flip side of the same coin. Um, we can give students as much information if they don't read their emails. There's not much that we can do about that. But, um, you know, it's, it's also about modeling this behavior. Um, we would hopefully, our students would have learned a lot from the last assessment period that we can build on going forward. Um, but just some basics that 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 I know that we that a lot of uh, you know the colleagues here are really doing is the best way for us to prepare our students for online assessments is to number one provide clear instructions. You've got so many many minutes. You've got to answer both questions. You know, work on that assumption that 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 everybody knows nothing the nothing is 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 to be excluded in in the preparation we are covering this topic to that topic etc um put in your planning from the get-go and i think we 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 really push this from from when we started um preparing for 
even before lockdown that teaching online does increase our admin. Um, so plan for emails around your deadline times. Um, and that's why I say if you have your deadline at midnight, um, you're going to wake up to a whole bunch of emails. But if your your deadline is four o'clock, you, you you could deal with those students who who really need need that one or two more minutes because they forgot to click this or whatever the case might be. Um, and yeah, I'm not talking about about students with with other issues, but just around the deadline time. Um, and I think that came through our survey quite clearly. Um, you know, one lecturer said, you know, I've never had so many emails around an assessment. I mean, that is unfortunately the, re the reality of online. Um, you will get a lot more. Um, and also plan for late submissions. Um, and as much as I hate saying it, you know, these, these stuff on the, on the next slide that, that I say stuff we can't control. Um, but plan for students that have, you know, issues that, that, that might be legitimate, some, some not so much. Um, and that's what I think what, what, what we can do from a lecturer's perspective um, to, to prepare our students. We will also, um, in the next couple of weeks, send out some help documents uh, to, to all lecturers to share with their students. Um, we've had, had lecturers who reported um, students send photos of their work, but then they send the biggest resolution photo that they can possibly take, um, which is a problem, or they send in a whole bunch of PDFs instead of one PDF with, with multiple pages and stuff like that. So we, we are busy correlating that with some colleagues that have already started doing that. Um, in their teaching, but we will send out something that you can edit or and, and even share with your with your students. Um, and I think that would just lessen the load when it comes to comes to 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 the marking bit. Um, and then you know the, the, there's also the things that we can't control. And unfortunately, the, these were <laughs> was the perfect storm for a lot of our modules where. We had, we had load shedding, load, what's the other one, load reduction. I mean, we've got so many nice words for, for, for power outages that it's, it's, it's actually just shocking. Um, not that you could do that in most, most of these times, but unfortunately, I think we'll, we'll, we might not have to plan for it as much as the last round, you know, touch wood. Um, hopefully we'll be more in, in a bit more hotter climate. Um, and, uh, you know, hopefully they can, you know, um, meet the demands, uh, right, but anyway, but if it does pop up, it's unfortunately something that we, we're going to have to think about. Um, there might be late submissions to, due to illnesses or, you know, connectivity or, I mean, I think, Everybody here has, has 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 had some form of 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 you know engagement with students around why they can't submit, um, and you know to deal with that. Unfortunately, in the quiz and assignment, the the only way is to do a user override, and that way we only giving certain students extra time, so we can actually close close off a a a quiz or a assignment but extend it for only one user which is really helpful because it doesn't mean we have to you know make it available for everyone um so i'll take you through that very quickly because it's very simple um but it is something that we might have to to, to really think about um steven i see you've got something here as well let me just quickly check that Yeah, so Stephen, that's exactly one thing. So Stephen points out, you know, he struggled with several online PDF mergers and converters. Um, and they all have different limitations. Um, so there is a couple that, that we that we'll, we'll share with online converters. Um, the idea is there is a couple of freeware apps that you can actually 
used you to merge apps on your phone. Um, there's also different options if you're using a computer. Um, I, for instance, have one. It is called Convertio, which uh, is a lot more than, than just a, a combiner. It can actually convert stuff. It can recognize text and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> But that's one option if you if you are like Nicholas says, we as staff members can get Adobe DC um, to to actually put together PDFs and stuff like that. Um, you can if you have it in Word documents, Stephen, you can actually save it as a PDF by combining Word docs. Um, <clears throat> but but Convertio is another way that I've been using it, and it's a uh, it's completely free so there's no limitations on what you can do can do with convertio i'll share i'll put the link to to it in in, in the slide as well um <clears throat> okay cool, thanks now and then while, while you're getting ready with your next slide i just want to also mention that in many cases students are using their mobile phones um so we've been putting together a little tool guide and there's a link we can share with you for some basic things and you know what is small can be used offline via a mobile phone but also what what freeware is available uh for for laptops um so that's a growing list um yeah so neil you can add convertio to there um a uh, bit later Some students just need a basic, you know, a word processor. Others want a PDF viewer on the phone. Um, and then others have to, want to be able to compress or merge PDFs. Yeah, so Cam yeah. Scanner has been a popular one. Um, High PDF is another one that I'd found. Cam Scanner is a, is a, a mobile app. So even for you guys, if you want to scan a document, um, Using your mobile phone, cam scanner is really, really useful. Yeah, so it's it's really about finding the ones that 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 would be most useful to 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 most users and actually sharing that because unfortunately, you know, the, the the different devices react differently to to different pieces to do different apps. Um, depending on what version of Android they are using, depending on the quality of the camera. So there's a lot of variables that, that influence, uh, you know, how, how these apps actually work. Hi, Mamza. <clears throat> so, so yeah, so, so this is something that, something like this that we will share, uh, we'll, we'll get that ready. And it, it could be something that, that could just, be that little bit of information that that students need to 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 take everything to the next uh, to the next level and hopefully make your lives easier as well when it comes to assessment. Okay, so we also have put in a, a, a the link to to some of the resources that we have on here, um, and these are um, slides or or uh, or are you teaching online um, uh, course page? Um, okay, I'm going to switch over to, to Are You Connected now? And if uh, something weird happens where you can't see, maybe just unmute yourself and tell me to stop. Um, I'm not going to do a lot of movement-y stuff. I'm just going to talk about the quiz and about the assignment. Um, and that's really it. Um, that that will 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 talk about okay <clears throat> and just to also mention neil that uh, and i think uh, just to remind folks about what you said we're not going to the through the full how to set it up but rather just the sort of niggly issues that i think you know everyone should really know about right neil yes this is this is really just the the, the settings that's going to to make your your assessment as as easy as possible for you and for your students, 
Um, we sent out a, a document um, a bit before the first assessment uh, window and we've, we've learned a bit about, uh, about that practice. So, so it's just about sharing what, what really works best um, or <clears throat> rather what we would suggest. So, so let's say maybe start right off the bat maybe with a quiz. Um, so the quiz, again, we, we, we've, we've used it in different contexts at, at Rhodes. We've had um, some colleagues that have used it as a multiple choice. We've had colleagues that would, would have used it as a, um, a uh, space to, to provide uh, short answers. And, you know, again, it, it doesn't really matter. However, while saying that, I think <clears throat> what, what we've learned about the quiz and longer, longer answers it might be better practice to, to actually use the assignment tool for any and all, um, you know, type-based um, questions. We've had students who have lost connectivity when they typing into the quiz and then they lose their answer, not because of the system, but because they refresh their browser um, or they might delete their own work. So, just my own thinking is if, if I would, if I was going to set up a, an exam now for, for any students, um, I would use the, the quiz really for multiple choice, true and false, and those type of questions. Um, so, so that would be my, um, um, my, my thinking. But yeah, uh, Nicola said here, you know, um, <coughs> in, in, in the, quiz, we cannot activate Turnitin yet. Um, so we can't really check similarity scores between students in our class. So that's what you lose when you use this. It, it is really simple to mark on, but it, it, yeah, it, it, it has an inherent risk for the student that might lose some work, um, even though that's probably less than 0.005% of cases. Um, it is just something that, that, that can cause a lot of anxiety um, in a space where we don't want to cause more. Um, and I think what we've also learned is, is really around the timing. Um, you know, it's fine to set the time limit if that is what you what you need to use, but just make sure that if, if you need to use a, a, a test that with a four hour time limit, make sure to add 10 minutes on for, for, for students to submit if they need to. There might be some, some connectivity issues, um, but generally 10 minutes should be enough. Um, then, I think the most important one is what happens when time expires. Now, there are three options, and I'll go to the chat in a second. There are three options. Open attempts are submitted automatically. That is definitely still the option that I say, please go for that. The only reason why I'm saying that is the moment you choose any of these two, attempts must be submitted before time expires or they are not counted. Um, if you choose that option, whatever a student's work has been done, if they are one second late, it just wipes it and it is gone. Um, some colleagues have opted to use the grace period. However, after the grace period, students need to click submit, otherwise the, 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 the attempt is stuck in a, a uh, sub, in, in, in a save but not submitted state. So if a student attempts it and they have this grace period and the grace period starts, let's say the grace period is one minute, um, in that one minute, if they don't click save, it, it will show on the system that the student did, did attempt, but it's not submitted. Now, what happened is some colleagues have missed this and students have come back after marks have been made available and it becomes an entire nightmare 
around admin where again we don't need more drama we want to make your life a lot easier so i would really just say open it team so submit it automatically and you know add add five minutes or ten minutes or three minutes extra and that way you can tell your students that the test stops at four hours but you've got five minutes extra to to submit then it's up to them to manage that time and neil yeah um with open attempts are submitted automatically students don't have to click submit right and any work that is there they are actually it is submitted it's not stuck in submission limbo correct yes that's correct so so if i attempt this quiz now with open attempts are automatically submitted if i click if i finish my attempt and i click submit it's done it, it's going to save it um and it, there's no limbo for that space um, yeah. when it when it's in one of the other options that's when when you have that 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 limbo um and unfortunately you know it is something that we at edtech need to help you with there is a way that we can 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 help you do it for yourself but you know it's better for us to 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 actually work with them uh with students that have done that we don't need to have the student involved at all we can actually you know force the submission through but it is something that we as as managers and admins on, on the system can only do um, oh. so teachers won't be able to do that so a question here yeah. so time time limit refers to extra time so so this time limit here is actually this quiz has a time limit of one minute but if i if i say grace period you, it, it opens this up but as I say, we don't even want to go to that. This is the limit. So if my test is is an hour, I'll have sixty minutes. But you can you can put this in weeks, days, hours. So you know it's actually up to you to to decide how long this this time limit is. So mm, let's so say I set my quiz. Yeah, let's say I set my quiz for today. It opened up at at twenty eight minutes past two. And I want it to be complete by five o'clock. Right. So the period that students can attempt this is from half past two till five. When I go in at four o'clock as a student, I'll only have 60 minutes to complete this. I won't have an hour and a half. I'll only have 60 minutes. If that makes sense. So this is the duration of the test, and that's the window in which I can attempt the test. So if my test is only 20 minutes long, I can start the attempt, I can start the test in this time frame, but I'll only have 20 minutes to, to actually complete it. Okay. This is why now. Yeah, and you're well, going back to hmm. yeah. Um you're going back to grace period. So grace period is like <clears throat> extra time. And while grace period, I mean, a lot of colleagues, I think, ran into difficulties by selecting that option because grace period sounds like a good idea, right, folks? <laughs> but yeah. yeah, grace period actually just caused uh, a bit of hassle, right? Yeah. So yeah. So 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 to give it to give you context around it, we've had colleagues who used who used the 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 the, the quiz and they had a combination of of multiple choice questions and uh, uh, I think it's one or two essay questions. So <clears throat> there was no time limit for the test. So students could take as long as they want. They had, I think, three or four days to complete this. So students went in, they completed the first section. They, and obviously they did that an hour before it was due. Um, and they spent, let's say, in, it's in this case, you've got 20 minutes. The quiz would count down to 20 minutes. Once it reaches 20 minutes, it would freeze the student's attempt. And it, another time it would go five minutes to, 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 to actually submit. But what students did then is because they think it's already submitted, they just close the tab. So instead of saying submit all and finish, they just close the tab and they walk away. 
And that's how the thing got stuck. Oh, how their attempt got stuck in limbo. And because it doesn't pop up as Neil submitted this, you need to mark his, his essay. Um, you know, when the person started marking, um, they, they, they actually didn't see that there was an attempt by Neil at all. So <clears throat> they didn't, ended up not marking it and the, and the, and the mark wasn't calculated to the, to, the, to the final mark. So student got, what's, what's the terminology? Sorry, I still, I'm, in this part, I'm still new. What, what do they, they don't get DP, no, no. Uh, did not qualify, if I'm, if I'm correct. But, you know, so it says, student didn't write the exam, but the student said, I did. And when we go check on the system, we found it there. And, you know, then it's a whole rigmarole. And as far as I understand, you have to go to the dean to open up the system. And da, 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 da. yeah, D, D and W, thank you. So, <clears throat> then, you, so then you sit with, uh, not egg on your face, but, you know, you, you're sitting in a space where the student hates you. You hate the student. Everybody's just upset with each other. But one simple solution, it's just open attempts are automatically submitted. And again, if we communicate that to our students to say, listen, if the timer runs out, it's just going to submit your work, but only when it runs out. And that way we have no ill feelings towards each other, if, if that makes sense. So this is still the only one that I would, I would still put in place. And, and I would really go for that option. I'd rather, we can rather, it's easier to help a student that says, um, Neil, I started my assessment and 10 minutes into my assessment, I lost connectivity and I couldn't complete it because we can see on Are You Connected that Neil logged in. He did two questions and then he didn't do anything else after that. That's easy to see, but when it comes to Having to resubmit, it, it's a bit more trickier, but it's not impossible. All right. Any questions around the quiz? None, clear as mud. Um, one that I've just thought about is when people give sure. different options. When people say first attempt, second attempt, how many attempts do you want to give people? Oh, ah, okay. Oh, that mm, a good because one. often if people yeah, because often if you, if you give students only one attempt, if they lose connectivity, because we know that's one of our main challenges among our students, um, that's why we wouldn't necessarily want to say one attempt. Yes, um, you know, I, I would think two attempts are better. But what I can also say at the same time is, you know, one faculty has really relied on, on, on quizzes. Um, as their main form of, of assessment. Um, and they've, they've put down to, to one attempt. Um, and, and so far it worked. Um, and, and so far during this term, it's been surprisingly stable. I think students are, students have also learned from the last assessment period, right? What works, what doesn't work. And, what are the limits? Because they've been in communication with us at EdTech and saying, well, this student said they wrote, but they couldn't, or they started their attempt, but they never finished. So it's something that we can, you know, help Cohen, I don't want to say investigate, just see if there's a solution. So, so that really did help. Um, but again, if, it's, if it is something easier and you want to go multiple attempts, you can choose how many ever you would you would like. So if we say two, <clears throat> it also has a grading method. And what we mean by that here is, is do you want to use the highest grade, the average of the two first attempt or only the last attempt? So yeah, so it really depends on 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 what you want to take away from 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 the grade from what grade you want to take away um, so yeah it, it 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 can be useful but as i say it, it's it's been working in different ways in different spaces um, but yeah cool any other question Nicola? anybody i 
Huh? I just wanted to this Leone. Hi Leone, go for it. Yeah, no, this is about the previous one. I couldn't get uh, say or get myself unmuted in time. I did oh, a quiz sorry. And, no, it's okay. That's not your fault. Um, I did a quiz uh, when time expires, use the second option. In other words, there was a grace period. Um, yes. So three, one student didn't press submit and her it showed that she had submitted and then there was no nothing entered for her two yeah. other students but i don't know there were two places where they could press submit two other students though it said they did not submit but i could see all the answers and mark them manually that wasn't a problem so but i think you will tell us what happens if a student like lost everything one can override or they can because they let they informed me immediately during the test that that had yeah. happened or immediately after yeah okay okay all right yeah, so, yeah yeah so 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 it depends on what happened when they when they when they click submit so if, if i'm in the grace period and i just close my tab it's it, it it the system can kick it out to say you know you have submitted but it 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 would be the the, the second two where where you see the attempt right so you'll see the attempt of the, of the students and you can mark it manually which you don't really have to if that does happen pop us an email at itech and we can we can set it so that it'll actually take those students first the, the, the attempts that they have and actually just make it a second attempt and it'll it'll push through so it'll still oh, mark it yeah, so, so just pop Thank us an email with, with, with a URL um, to that quiz and the student names and, and we can do that. And, and all of that happens in, in, under this section, the user override. So this is something I spoke about when we have load shedding and all of those things that we can't control. Or if you have one student who, who really had a problem um, I couldn't admit I had flu, my hamsters are festering me at night or whatever the case might be. So we can actually add in user override user. So, so let's say I want, I've got to say, my health let me give new an extension to 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 actually complete this tomorrow not with everybody today i can say for neil crumb open this quiz at this day at that time and in, in, and close it also on on um the 23rd yeah, sorry, is everything all right? Can everybody hear me? If you can, just put a Y you, in the uh, chat. You, you've been breaking up a bit, Neil. Oh, my soul. Okay. Um, <coughs> yeah, sorry, Neil. I so, thought it was just me, but I thought, let me just ask in case. <laughs> yes, it was, please. It's, it's kind of, maybe it's when you open a page. <laughs> Wait a yeah. bit. <laughs> okay, let's, um, let's do that. <laughs> yeah, no, I think that, but um, um, you can open your next tab so long or whatever. But I want to raise what Leonie mentioned, which is actually really important, that the students communicate with you as lecturer and then you contact us rather than the student. Um, yes. We have had some cases where kind of like the lecturers, you know, we're not, we don't want to give you a slap on the wrist. It's not our purpose. Uh, you know, and, and 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 in a way, it was kind of like the tone was sort of, you know, the lecturer telling us to stay in our lane, and the students kind of like looking. It seemed like they were reporting the lecturer. So it's better that the students come to you, and then you come to us. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so that way, you know, it's 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 never from our side. It's never about naming and shaming or stuff like that. It's really just sometimes students email us, and you know, they they need help or you know, it's something like that. And uh, yeah, I mean, it it happened once or twice where where we got told to 
to not not get involved, but it was a legitimate issue. Um, so yeah, again, we're here to support everybody. So, so yeah, okay. So so maybe I can just say this again, just very briefly. User override. I can can override the actions for one user. In this case, Neil Crum. Remember, I set the set the quiz for today to half past two till five. Here, I want to say change this user's access to the 23rd and he must do it at that time. He has a time limit of 20 minutes. And this is also where, where you can um, add uh, extra time. So if you've got a student with a concession, let's say the student has got a five minute uh, concession, I can say 25 minutes. And obviously, if I only give everybody one attempt, I'll put that to one attempt and I'll say save. So even if if this student is, is writing at the same time, if you need to add a concession, this is where you can. So this one student would have five minutes extra compared to other students. So this is probably the most important tool to, to deal with those uncontrollable issues. All right. Very clear as I see that that uh, is is my connection completely bad? No, you're actually really good now. <laughs> okay, cool. Give me one second. Let me just Okay. Sorry about that. But I'm I'm also I'm also lagging at times. So I think it's sort of yeah. Um, yeah, no. Go for it, Neil. Okay, sorry about that. Just uh, other users on the net, so I had to kick them off. You know, I said, I said a lot of bad content for doing that. Okay, um, so as we've gotten given this person an override, and we can do exactly the same for for users on a a. Um, on an assignment. Um, but before I go to the assignment, there was one quick question about the quiz. Let me just quickly see if I can get there. Um, I'm, gonna try, I'm not gonna try and open up a new page. So if I get laggy, maybe just... Uh, so Mamza, now, now you say you can't, you can't hear. Um, I'm just going to open this quickly and then I'll speak once I've got it open. Sorry guys, I'll be back in a sec. I'm just, uh, <clears throat> I can't add a question here. All right. Um, all right, I'll, I'll have to come back to that question on, on the quiz. Um, I'll have to create another quiz, but I just want to close some tabs. So this is Amon's question. Yes, Amon, the... Amon, maybe, yeah, maybe after, after we finish, um, I'll quickly show you very briefly if that's fine. It's really simple, but I'll, I'm going to have to create a new quiz for to to show you that. Okay. 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 Cool. Thanks. Um, all right. So so the same thing when it comes to a assignment, and I'm just going to start this uh, edit. I'll wait for it to load first. Okay, is this good? 
Yeah, sorry about that. I'm going to start going to the office for these sessions. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so I'm not going to go through all the basics. I just want to talk about three things here. So number one is around availability. And we had colleagues report that, you know, students have been taking extra time um, submitting assignments late, et cetera, et cetera, without them knowing about it. Um, which cause problems later when you mark and also when marks are calculated, et cetera, et cetera. So one way in which we can try and take some control, because half the time, even if we control the system, then it, it gives us space to, to plan. Um, so generally when we set up something, we will say allow from and we'll add a due date. But if we only enable these two, that means after the 22nd at 6 this morning, students can still submit an assignment until, you know, um, are you connected is, is, is dead. That's still when we can submit. But if we activate the cutoff date, <clears throat> if I activate the cutoff date, Students can only submit until 11 minutes past six. After that, no student can submit anything on this link. And I think this is very really useful, especially for you to control who submits, when they submit late. And again, if we communicate to them and say, listen, if you don't submit in time, you actually need to email me um, and I'll open up the system for you to, to resubmit. Um, and we can say give give students a a um, a uh, an extension. Um, yes, as Nicholas say, you can you 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 can you can choose to ignore it if you want. But if structure is what you crave, activating the cutoff date would be very useful. So if my assessment is due for this time. After this, you cannot submit. You actually need to email me. Um, so hopefully that would, would, would give you some, some structure. Then the last thing, and I'm just going to close everything as much as I can, um, is submission settings. What we, what we advocated with the pre-assessment uh, is that we said we click the st students to click submit button. We said no. Sorry, I think I might have gone a bit loopy there. I think it did pop up. Internet is unstable. So the previous previous guideline we sent out, we said under these two settings, select no and no. And literally what this means is when students submit, they need to Take a statement. If they don't tick it, this, the, the, the assignment won't be submitted. But what happened in reality is a couple of students submitted, didn't tick it, but click submit and, and close their tab either on their phone or on, 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 the, um, on, on, on the web browser. Now, again, you would have a submission, but it won't show up as a, as a submitted paper. And that's a problem because you, either, you would then need, um, you would then need to uh, either email us or open it for, this, for the student to resubmit. And that's a, that, that becomes really complex for you. Because again, you're going to be sitting marking. I don't want, we don't want you to worry about the, the, the frivolous things. All right. Um, so I would say on this one, students click the submit button. This I'm going to say yes, but tentative to what you want to do. So if you are going to open up the submission link for your students and then close it immediately after they've, they've, they've done uh, all these submissions, I would say you can leave it to no and no. That is the easiest way for students to submit um, and they can submit it. If we have this on no, students can actually go at a later stage 
and update that, that assignment. We will see it on the system because if I update this outside of, of the, the due date, so let's say my cutoff date is not activated and I change it, it will change the submission to a late submission. So we'll still see that somebody has fiddled with it. But if you want your students to submit once and once they've submitted, that is it, you're gonna click yes. And that way, after they submit it, they're unable to edit their And especially if you're not going to add a cutoff date, this is probably the best setup. Um, and we will also, what I forgot to put in the slides, is also do a, a guide for students how to submit um, using the settings. So we'll send that to you as well. I'm already, I've already started working on this. So this is the first setting. And then, then comes the last one around academic integrity. And that's why I say using the assignment for any written work is probably the best option because you can activate Turnitin by simply going to the Turnitin plugin settings and saying yes. This activates all of the Turnitin settings and you can decide if you want students to see it. So if you say display report settings to yes, when students submit, they'll see the similarity index. If you say no, they'll submit and only you will see their, their, their similarity index. So it can be useful. Um, the only other thing that I'll Students can't recycle paper next year or later or among each other in the class now. But also, when it comes to these ones, check against sort student papers. Yes, you want that because if Neil submits, it's in a standard repository. You want my, everybody else's paper, paper to be checked by mine. Or maybe uh, Nicola showed me her paper or I stole it or picked it up somewhere. I type it and submit it. This way we'll see that um, Nicola, oh, or I copied hers or vice versa. And the same with this. Yes, we want to check internet and yes, we want to check that in case students copy and paste anything. Um, so yeah, and we don't want to exclude anything. So, so to ensure that students don't, don't get away with any nefarious uh, activities. So yeah, and I think this is probably the, the ideal setup that I would do for an assignment. You know, we take some back, some of the control, we control when people submit late. We, and we also have the, probably the best, the best uh, tool um, to, to ensure academic integrity in, in, in uh, the Turnitin that is activated. Cool. Any questions? Sorry, Neil, you were lagging quite a bit on my side. Um, maybe colleagues oh, just let, let me let us know in the chat if you got that. Um, the one thing also just around, um, okay, a bit of lag, but got the main points. Okay, great. Okay. And another thing, just I didn't get the last bit. So maybe if you can just repeat the last okay. bit. And the other, other thing I just want to say is that sometimes the similarity report, whether or not you show it, <laughs> I guess both can result in questions. The students will say, I submitted my assignment, but I don't see the Turnitin report. In cases where you do want students to see the Turnitin report, they say, well, when I first submitted it, I had 6%. And three hours later, I see 36%. You know, I think mm -hmm. there's something wrong here. But what happens is that when, um, you know, more students submit, and obviously if they're using, maybe they're using the same quotation, um, not necessarily that they're not necessar necessarily plagiarism, um, then that similarity score can actually go up. Oh, I'm now, I'm breaking up now. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, I guess it means lags for us all at different times. Um, so sorry about that. Um, yeah, so I was just sharing about the similarity index that can sometimes be a bit higher because as more students submit and they're using the same quotation, um, then that can actually increase that score. Uh, and sometimes seeing the similarity report can be stressful for students. So I guess, it, you know, base whether or not to show it on, you know, how well you know your students and maybe also say, tell them, look, the score does go up. Um, I do analyze, you know, tell them you look at the reports, you know, you know, making a judgment just based on that percentage. Yes, we'll share the presentation on the RU Teaching Online site after this. Uh, back to you, Neil. Oh, sorry. So let me just recap that last, um, last, last couple of things that I said. Um, I'm going to share my screen again. Um, so if, if I do come through broken on this, um, but but basically all I was saying is that we can activate Turnitin. We can decide to show it to students or not. I do think that we need to activate the standard repository. That way, all students' um, submissions are saved onto Turnitin, so nobody can recycle papers later. Um, that that could be very very good. Um, and also, if we say yes to check against stored student papers, if we check peers in my class. We also wanted to check churches and periodicals and publications. In fact, a, a website where they could come from, we will be able to see that that link to it. Um, and on this we also want to not exclude any so that students can't get away with any attempt to to circumvent Turnitin. Um, we did a session um, that's the and the recording is available on on how and why we should say no to all of these. Um, so yeah, but but this is this is definitely the setup that I would I would go for, especially for Turnitin. Oh, cool. I'm going to stop sharing now, but please, if you do have any questions, please let us know. Um, we can, we will be able to do that. Uh, I just shared a link in the chat to the to the presentation for now, so that maybe you can. Uh, raise your hand or type M, and uh, you know, mic's all yours. Awesome pleasure, Caroline. Um, I hope it was it was meaningful. You know, um, we don't don't break away from doing too many things. Caroline, sorry, you've got the mic. Yeah. You can go. Yeah, I just wanted to say thanks. Um, I'm not going to you be using the quiz myself, but we're facing a big um, uh, exam equivalent for the honors group, and it's really helped me think about some of the the pitfalls um, so that I can advise lecturers on the course and, and we can have yeah. you know, conversations around this. Really great. Thanks very much. My pleasure. Yeah, awesome. And just, I mean, I think we, we spoke about students being strategic and I don't want to give the impression that all students are being dodgy, <laughs> but there yeah. are some that are quite strategic and sometimes you know we, we, i guess i guess while we're giving them the benefit of the doubt i mean we do know yeah. from other lecturers and things that there are situations where students are whatsapping each other sure. and like if you don't use uh, randomized questions 
then oh what did you say Neil for number yeah. question yeah. number one what was your answer um, I mean that kind of thing yeah. is happening there's even cases where students even a, a voice note oh how did you how would you go about answering this and the person just thought innocently that the, that the, the classmate wasn't going to write exactly what they said um, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, it's very confusing I think mm. at the stage but, but also, um, I, I get a lot of the, because I'm the coordinator, I get a lot of the, the panic comes to me. So just a simple tip like, don't make it midnight. <laughs> it's just, yes. you know, I just thought, yes, of course, you know, but it's the kind of thing when, when, when doesn't, that escapes one in the, in the mood of the, of the moment of well, setting the exam. So, yeah, yeah, you know, so. Um, yeah. And, and it's hard to know when you set an assessment exactly what can, could go wrong. Go wrong. And when yeah. it goes wrong, yeah. it, it messes up so many people's lives. Um, exactly. So and, yeah. Exactly. And people get upset. And I mean, rightly mm. so. Mm. Students, students. Uh, the com yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. For them, it's marks. For, for you, it's, mm. it's, it's additional work because when things go wrong, sure. it, it does affect us in, sure. in very bad ways. Yeah. Um, and, and that, that sure. whole thing about, about um, you know, allowing, whether you allow a grace period, I would have thought the grace period was a good idea. But yeah. I can see exactly now why it's not. Anyway, many thanks. Eh? I'm, I'm going to um, say goodbye and, and uh, all the best to everyone. No, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Great. Yeah, thank Got you. It. And that's, that's, I think, exactly why we wanted to have this session is to share, you know, mm. we're all building the ship while we're sailing <laughs> and learning mm. as we go and kind of just lessons learned from, you know, colleagues that have been through these kinds of things and us on the other end as well, sort of being on the sort of investigating side. Now, why did this happen? <laughs> so, mm. yeah. <clears throat> exactly. Exactly. All right. Awesome. Great. Everybody that has to go, thank you so much. Uh, Heinrich, no problem. I know the override is like a game changer. You know, um, we don't, don't know about it. It's, it's, it's probably the coolest thing ever. Um, so, yeah. Uh, anyone, uh, I think uh, I'm going to just show you that I'm going to share my screen again in a second time and just go through that issue on the on the quiz. For the rest, thank you so much for joining us and uh, we'll see everybody online and hopefully one day face to face. Um, and yeah, thanks for joining. Yeah, Natasha, very true. You know, under the review attempts, uh, so that students don't see the solution. Uh, the first time I ever did one, I did that rookie move and made all my answers available. And I couldn't understand why 99.99% of the class scored 100. It's just impossible. So, yeah, it was my own best friend. Cool, but thank you so much, everyone, for joining. All right, uh, everyone, I'm going to quickly share again. Um, so I'm just, you should be able to see my screen now. Okay, so so I'm, I'm just creating my questions for me in the question bank. Um, I'm just going to create a new one because those ones are all true and false. You can't, you can't jumble true and false. Um, but when we start a new question, you know, give us question, a question name, or question text, uh, general feedback doesn't really matter. And one or multiple, and here you'll see shuffle the choices. So are you connected shuffles or, or questions on, on two settings? The first one is on the, on the question level. So when we set up, if we unselect this, it, it won't shuffle our questions. Uh, I know exactly which question you're talking about. You'll, you'll have which one is better, choice A1, choice two, and then your third one is both one and two, right? 
we have that type of question. So only this question can, only this answer can be correct. And yeah. it's not going to make sense if this is shuffled, because if this is option one, then students are going to send you emails. Why is this thing wrong? We've caught you, ha, 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 um, type of deal. So <clears throat> the moment we save this, your question will not shuffle. Um, but it's the same type of deal that you would have on on a quiz. So if I go to a quiz, and now I'm gonna to have to start a new one. Because once once students have attempted a quiz, you can't really, you know, um, you can't add another question. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, at all. So you can't you can't add or even take away from a quiz once somebody has attempted it. Um, gonna do it that way. So when I edit the quiz, mm -hmm. add from question bank, and that is my question. I'm going to add it in. So, so the way it's now set up, the question itself is not going to to, to shuffle. Um, Welcome. But when we go back to our quiz itself and the quiz setup. Um, under question behavior, you've got mm. shuffle within questions. So that you can also say to no. But even if you say yes here, because we set up that question to to not shuffle, it shouldn't. So we're gonna quickly have a preview of that of this quiz quiz quick. So I've set the quiz to say shuffle, but I've and you see it won't shuffle. But any other question where you say, please do shuffle the question, it will shuffle the question. So if I go to the question and I untick that shuffle or tick the shuffle, it, it'll start shuffling this. Oh, okay. Yeah. So just make sure on question level, when you set up that question that you untick that option and it, it will never shuffle that, those, those type of questions. Oh, okay. Yeah. Awesome, simple Thanks. solution. Cool. Right, thank you. <laughs> No problem. Anything else? Great. Yeah, it looks like they're good. Neil, I see you are host, so can you stop the recording? Oh my goodness, yeah. Stop <laughs> recording. Cool. Which means you'll Great. you'll have access to the recording.